Hello everyone, this here is the LEGO Ninjago Kai's Golden Dragon Raider set. I bought this for its retail price of $90 US 90 and built it live over on Twitch. This is made of 624 pieces and it comes with seven minifigures that I think are quite good. And I'm just gonna move those aside for right now as I usually do so we can focus on the main thing. <laughs> now keep in mind that this is essentially just a car. Just a car for Kai, although it will hold two people, but it's still just two people. It was giant. I'm going to bring the figure back just for the sake of scale. It is absolutely huge for such a fundamentally basic mode of transportation. You know, it, it's not a troop transport. It's not a headquarters or anything like that. It is, I think it has been underestimated in its pure size and not only the size, but also what it can do. There are a bunch of features built into this. Now it may look a little bit, a little bit mixed up, a little bit like it's got a, a whole lot of stuff going on with it. And that's because it literally does have a whole lot of stuff going on with it. Let's, uh, let's first actually look at the major features, the major, major things that it'll do transformatively. These open up. I don't know why for it's weird. What is the purpose of that? I don't know, but I kind of like the look of it at least. And then at the back, you've got the ability to increase the ride height of this, bringing the, the tires all the way up like that. Now, it doesn't look so great down the middle, but this fundamentally changes the, the look and the, the shape of this and changes its aggressiveness. And then if you combine those two things together, then you can have it kind of lean forward like this which again, looks really cool to me personally. I don't know quite what you can do with it because it's not able to really turn well. Uh, it's not able to really move at all. And if you just have this off to one side, oh, well, one wheel is kind of off the, off the ground. It's not really helping you to turn or anything like that. But I just think that it's cool. And if I was a kid, I would find it to be fun. And then around the back, this makes it easy to get access to this dial right here that you rotate to make the plasma launcher things <laughs> rotate forward. So now these are facing forward and there are spring loaded shooters here, uh, two on either side. They're very easy to access from back here. It's actually, honestly, a little bit annoying how easy it is to accidentally fire off the spring loaded shooters, but you can kind of change your aim with this, you know, so you can aim up a little bit, have more of that, that arced shot or be a little bit more direct with it. It's not able to shoot perfectly forward. So no matter what, you're gonna get an arc out of it. And then you can combine those things together. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, now that's almost straightforward. So that's useful. This is still angled up very slightly, but that does at least help, right? Using using what's there to, to make things work that you want. And then this can also be adjusted. So I can go kind of in between if I want, and I can go back and forth between. So, you know, these are different looks that you can get out of. And all of this stuff just reminds me of some of the coolest stuff to me personally, you know, and different kids have, have different stuff that they, that they like, but reminds me of stuff that I really, really enjoyed in toys, or at least toys that I was interested in that I would see on TV and in stores and stuff, you know, and commercials, uh, just all the stuff that you can do like that. Now this is able to, to come up and then there's a thing that launches from here. It's a little, little drone or it can also be used as an air scooter. So you can hold on to the back of it, but you'd most likely just use this as a, as a unmanned, uh, you know, recon drone sort of thing. And then putting that back also, all of this not only rotates up, but it also can shift forward. And if you shift it forward, then it makes a connection sort of with the the sides, the surrounds to the canopy, to the cockpit area. So that comes together. And then if I put this back, then you can see how all the gold kind of becomes, I don't know, maybe more of a roll cage shield sort of thing. And I suppose you can maybe adjust these angles just a little bit, get slightly different appearances out of it. I could actually get these to go in between there. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, see now it all comes together a little bit more closely in there. Uh, that's actually an interesting look, although I don't like this fin right here. I think that kind of gets in the way, but see, there's a whole lot you can do with this. So to start with, we're, we're definitely off to a good start. It's definitely something that you can grab and, and play with. These look a little bit floppy, but they're not going anywhere. Seems fun at the very least to start with. And th there are a couple of clips back here. You can put minifig accessories, connect them up there. And let me get this open. Just move this back 
So you can see inside the canopy, which opens up and there's a seat here and a seat here and that's it. So you've got some controls along the sides. There's no like uh, steering yoke or anything. I think that's missing a little bit, but the figure who's doing the main control also gets to see this panel up here that's just a sticker against a tile. So it's showing targeting information and stuff about your status of, of your weapons. So they give you really easy access at least to get the figures in there. I just wish that there was something that would look like the minifigure would be reaching for it to represent controls. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of, of gear train in this, but it's not too much uh, just to operate the the, the rotation of these side bits. They're actually kind of clever how it goes together and everything does feel to me like it's gonna keep itself together. The fact that the canopy is backwards like this and has the big openings on the sides does feel a little bit awkward to me there. This does also require three stickers. The stickers are all clear backed and that's a pretty big sticker and it's a, you know, it's a trio of them that you need to get kind of right otherwise they look kind of bad really wish that this was a printed canopy piece just here the rest of the stickers i'm fine with although it is odd that they chose to go with a clear backing and then added red on top of that because see that red doesn't match they could have just left it clear um i don't know there, there are pluses and minuses to that but so much of it has the red that's obviously a different color that's just a little bit a little bit odd but a lot of the stuff is covered up really really well you know, a lot of the, the technic mechanisms and the inner inner bits that are done for the sake of strength are not really showing that much. For something that's a toy, yeah, I see the yellow down there, but it's fine with the with the scheme, you know, with the color scheme of it. This is all nicely covered up around here. There's a lot of good going on here. I personally am not the biggest fan of these style of wheel covers, but I think it works just fine in this particular case. Most places I haven't liked these, but on this one, I think it's okay. And then it's nice to get more of these Spike Prime heavy pre-molded, uh, dual molded wheel tire combos. Because these are some of the, the best, some of the lowest rolling resistance wheel tire combos that Lego makes. And they have a, not a, a lot of nice weight to them. It's a good rubber and it just feels good. Uh, however, that said, very little weight ever goes on these with this particular vehicle because it still has to be able to hold itself up. I mean, you know, this, this is way spread way, way, way apart. So these would easily bend and the whole thing would be down on the ground. Were it not for these tiny little cheater wheels here with no tires on them, honestly, they end up holding much of the weight of the entire vehicle, which is, which is kind of awkward to me because I have this very nice hard surface here. So even though it's mostly resting on those wheels there, it doesn't sound that bad, but you put it on a surface that's not perfectly flat and smooth, and it has a very plasticky kind of feel to it that takes away from the experience of playing with this. It takes it a little bit away from, from the immersion. I like good rubber wheels or rubber tires rather that make it feel like you really have a connection. You've got that traction with the ground, but here you've got these great tires here that aren't really doing anything, unfortunately, at the front. The rears have some traction. The fronts don't, and you've got those tiny little wheels down there. I wish they at least had some tires on them. Yeah. Although, I will say this. Those being hard plastic wheels do allow you to rotate more easily. You can turn this more easily for what it's worth. Looking at minifigures, of course, I got to start with Kai. This is Golden Kai here. It is a Golden Kai set after all. And on the right is Skylar, who earlier on I had mistakenly given two swords. Should only have one here. The other one's a spare. Both of these figures look good to me in just about every respect. I think that Skylar could have used a little bit of detail down on the hip and leg pieces just for the sake of consistency. You know, because there's so much going on all the way straight through here. And then this one just kind of cuts off halfway down. For a more expensive set like this, I think uh, I think that character could have could have done for something nicer. I like this hood piece. I continue to like this hood piece with the dual molded design there. It, it it's strong enough, I think, with the with the red and then with the gold behind it. I think it just I think it works out well for for these golden characters. And there are the full prints on the backs as well as the alternate faces. The Golden Dragon Ninja figures are majestic and large with their wingspan. This is Golden Dragon Zane, of course, does get printing through the torso, into the hips, and down into the legs. Notice two trans light blue legs and two trans light blue arms as well. 
good stuff right there. So nice to see that. I would like to see more transparent pieces. The arm, excuse me, the hands are light aqua. You got the nice marble dual molding here, which is done just so well. No two of these will be identical, but they've got the, the mold injection point up at, up at the top. I believe it's right up in here. Whatever's going on with the flow here, it is fairly consistent from wing to wing. It's not identical, but it's fairly consistent. And you see a pattern that just spreads out fairly organically which is, is a good trick. Nice, uh, nice looking helm there, or, you know, the, the dragon head kind of projection, I, I suppose it sort of is. And that's of course, dual molded with the, uh, it's not marbled together between the gold and the trans light blue. And underneath there, there is a decent trans light blue head with a face print on it looks pretty good although unfortunately you do have that black mark that shows up on on the front so registration mark kind of almost makes it look like he's he's got a, a beard there but it's not it's not really there on on the piece you're just seeing the the, the neck column and most of the time you're not going to see this print which itself is also good has some has some layers to it and if i can get that to hit the light you might be able to see it there just a little bit there's some subtlety in it i think it's good here on the left, I thought it was Mr. E, but no, it's 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 Mr. F. <laughs> it's the next one. And not only that, but it's General Mr. F. I've not watched this season of the show, so I don't know what they're going for there with the if it's supposed to be comedy or if it's supposed to be semi-serious. <laughs> but yeah, it's not Mr. E, it's Mr. F this time. And he's got the golden shurikens on the side of the crystallized weapon hilt, which does not have anything inside of it right now uh, attached from the top, just the attachments on the sides. Here in the center is a Venge Stone Warrior, and on the right is a Venge Stone Brute. The Brute here has two dark pink transparent arms whereas the warrior has just one everything else is gunmetal gray and see these figures look nice and consistent also top to bottom you know all the way through fully detailed with these there are no heads inside it's just a single dual molded piece which is done really exceptionally well uh it has a lot of good engineering work to ensure that light gets all the way through there. And with Mr. Not Mr. E, Mr. F here, there's no alternate face because he just gets the uh, the the eyes, and those have the the pink fringes rather than red. I forgot to mention there are actually two of the Vengestone warriors included in the set, plus one brute. The leftover part selection is really good with plenty of extra weapon pieces, including an extra one of these crystal sword elements that you can put into the hilt of Mr. E, uh, Mr. F, General Mr. F, to make that weapon look even more complete. And then looking at the sticker sheet again, this was all clear backed, although as you can see, the majority of these stickers were also red backed within that, but it's just red printing, which comes out a little bit mismatched to the color of plastic. In terms of price, again, this was $90 US, 9.0. It is 85 euros in Germany as the base price and varies from there. Uh, 75 pounds UK. And I've only heard from anybody that this thing is the like the most ridiculously overpriced Ninjago set of all time. And I disagree with that. I'm not going to go and try to find for you what I believe is the single most overpriced set of all time from Ninjago, but relative to expectation and relative to the negative hype against this thing it's rather large and it's rather good too like all this all this stuff that you can do with it i think is cool even the stuff that doesn't make so much sense still adds to it still adds to the experience this is a this is a fun classic reconfigurable toy and i respect the heck out of that and it comes with a nice selection of figures that are pretty fancy there's, you know, there's some some pretty fancy stuff here in general. It feels good. Playing with it a little bit more uh, since the, the studio shots, I found a couple of things that maybe if you mess with them a little bit can fall off a little bit too easily. Oh, no. Yeah. I was, I was kind of like messing around with these things here and I found that these bits, these little sub assemblies on the side weren't attached in the best way most secure way i like the building technique there i like how again they hid some some technique stuff but just thinking back to let's say before the whole craziness of the past couple years or so 
let's say early 2020, I would have expected this set to sell for about $70 US, but then including the fancy stuff in the, amongst the figures, maybe 75. So then Lego would have asked 80, you know, if they're being a little bit, a little bit greedy with it, I think. And uh, today it's 90. It's, it's honestly not that far out, out of the range, out of the realm of what you would expect from Lego. Now, it does still feel like too much to me. It still feels very expensive, but it's not like, oh my goodness, this is ridiculously expensive. The <laughs> like Ninjago is dead. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's not that. This is, a, this is big and it's good. There's a lot of good stuff here. So, of course, as always, as almost always, I would love to see this at a decent discount, 15 to 20% discounts. Many of my brothers and sisters across the Atlantic get that discount on day one. Uh, we don't, we don't over here, but, but, but that's okay. Still, Lego is expensive. I know that. I know that really, really well. It's always been expensive. It's actually, in most cases, cheaper today than it was back in the day, back in the good old days, you know, except relative to maybe a few years ago, it was cheaper. But you go back a decade, you go back two decades, you go back three decades. It was more expensive back then for what you, for what you got for sure. And so this relative to where we are today in the market ain't bad. And most importantly, it's a good set. So I'm generally happy with it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making it through to the end here. And stay tuned for more reviews from me, more builds on my Twitch channel. And uh, well, don't have just one YouTube channel. So check out the video description or the channel list over on my main channel page to see other stuff that I do. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.